Ghana has received the first COVID-19 vaccines through COVAX. That's a WHO scheme designed to help distribute doses fairly around the world. Here was the arrival, 600,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca jab landing on this plane in the capital Accra. A government delegation led by the health minister was there to receive them. Well, Ghana has a population of 31 million and it was chosen as the first recipient after promising quick distribution. Its vaccination drive will start on March the 2nd and frontline health workers along with the vulnerable will be first in the queue. Here's the BBC's Thomas Nadi in Accra. The initial target is to vaccinate 20 million people out of the country's 30 million population. A number of new variants have been identified in the country, among them the more infectious British variant. On Friday, Ghana's health service said that while infections had peaked, hospitals were still recording a high number of cases. The country has recorded over 80,000 cases of the virus and 582 deaths since the outbreak in March. Now, the doses are in West Africa now. They came from the Serum Institute of India, which is the world's biggest vaccine manufacturer. Here they are being packed into boxes at a facility in Pune. We're told other shipments from this factory are due to arrive in other parts of Africa very soon. While the WHO and the UN's children's charity, UNICEF, are hailing this moment, here's a statement from UNICEF saying, in the days ahead, frontline workers will begin to receive vaccines and the next phase in the fight against this disease can begin, the ramping up of the largest immunisation campaign in history. Well, the delivery is eight months after the start of COVAX. The idea behind it is to ensure that everyone gets vaccines regardless of their wealth or their country's wealth. And this is how it works. COVAX pools funds from wealthier countries to help buy vaccines for those countries if they want them, but more importantly, lower income countries. Its goal is to deliver 2.3 billion vaccines to people in 190 countries by the end of this year and most of those doses will go to the lower income countries free of charge. Success of course hinges on funding being provided. These countries have signed up, they have a choice of paying for their own jabs and those of countries unable to afford them or they can simply put money in which will fund doses to those lower income countries. So far over 10 billion dollars has been committed, that seems a lot, it is a lot, however it's still 800 million dollars short of this year's target. And we know that richer countries have been able to buy far more COVID jabs than lower income ones. Here's The Economist on the scale of the problem saying the 54 wealthiest countries are home to 18% of the world's adult population but have ordered 40% of all available vaccines. It blames vaccine hoarding for an unequal rollout and there is evidence that's happening. Look at this graph. Canada has ordered 338 million doses. That's enough to vaccinate its population five times over. I should say all those doses haven't arrived yet. And the UK, the EU and Australia also have orders in place to vaccinate their populations more than twice over. Again, though, all those vaccines have yet to be delivered. Well, the WHO has been vocal on this issue. Some high-income countries are entering contracts with vaccine manufacturers that undermine the deals that COVAX has in place and reduce the number of doses COVAX can buy. Even if we have the funds, we can only deliver vaccines to poorer countries if high-income countries cooperate in respecting the deals COVAX has done and the new deals it's doing. This is not a matter of charity. It's a matter of epidemiology. Well, there's been plenty of scrutiny over this program. While most first doses will go from the COVAX scheme to low or middle income countries, some wealthier countries are also using it. We're told Singapore has requested an early allocation. And here's an article on the New Zealand website Stuff reporting that the country will receive over, well, close to a quarter of a million jabs from COVAX by the end of July. And then there's Canada. It's the only member of the G7 group of rich countries listed as a COVAX beneficiary. As you can imagine, that's taken some size surprise. Criticism has been directed at the government. But here's one minister defending its approach. Our top priority is to ensure that Canadians have access to vaccines. Um, and so joining COVAX, being part of that, 
was part of it all along. As I said, from the summer, COVAX, we joined as a self-financing country. COVAX, COVAX's objective is to provide vaccines for 20% of the populations of all member states, both self-financing and uh, those who will receive donations. And so, um, you know, Canada made the decision, as, you know, other countries have, to take on uh, this first allocation because we recognize how important it is to ensure Canadians have access to vaccines. Well, let's consider whether Canada's defence stacks up. Here's BBC Population correspondent Stephanie Hegarty. Well, yeah, and in, in an ideal world, that is how COVAX was supposed to work, that a certain group would get the vaccines for free and another group would pay through the scheme. And those groups together would have bargaining power that would ensure they get vaccines more cheaply. But of course, we have this big production problem now in the first quarter of this year as the entire world wants to get access to these vaccines. And that's what's creating the tension here. And Canada has come under a lot of criticism, but Canada is also, you could argue, requesting the vaccines that it's paid for. And it's in a tricky position because its vaccination program has been really slow to start. Canada ordered a lot of doses, but it hasn't received most of them yet. And that's because maybe it didn't pay enough or it didn't pay early enough to get to the top of the queue with manufacturers. So Canada's vaccination pro program, its vaccination rollout has been really slow and it's under huge pressure to get its, vac its population vaccinated. And Stephanie, if that's a, a higher income country, let's talk about lower income countries. Do they have to have certain infrastructure in order to receive the jabs via COVAX? Well, COVAX hasn't given any country priority, but what it is prioritizing is countries that can get these vaccines into arms fast enough. And there's been a lot of discussion around whether low income countries have the infrastructure to manage a huge vaccination campaign like this. And but you have to remember a lot of them do. They're already running big vaccination, early childhood vaccination programs. So in a lot of cases, the infrastructure is there and the AstraZeneca vaccine delivered today, it's easy to store, it requires normal refrigeration. But even in the case of complicated vaccines like Pfizer or Moderna that need minus 70, one of the first countries in the world to roll out a vaccine, it was against Ebola that requires that kind of, of freezing, was the Democratic Republic of, Republic of Congo, a low income country.